Hello everybody and welcome to our two days webinar with the Migration Center team. Today's title of the webinar is Seamless Document Migration with the New Highland OnBase Importer. Before we start though, one mandatory slide of housekeeping. Please note that all attendees are muted during the whole session. Should you have any questions, please take a look at your GoToWebinar panel. There's a little questions box in which you can enter those questions and I will collect those and we will answer them in a dedicated Q&A session at the end of this webinar. Please also note that this webinar is being recorded and once we have it processed, we will share it with you afterwards. Now, before I hand over, let me quickly introduce our two-day speakers. Starting will be Frederik Olson, our Senior Sales and Partner Manager from FME Products, and then Mike Uhlenberg, our Senior Consultant from FME Products, will take over. And with that being said, I would like to hand over to our first speaker, Frederik. Yes, hello and welcome to today's session. We're going to look into how we seamless document migration with a new Highland on-base importer and how that works. But um, before we start, one slide to who we are. Uh, FME is a partner for digital transformation in life science, industrial manufacturing, finance, and a few more uh, industries. We do consulting, concept development, and maintenance, and products, and products is the department we are talking today. We're coming from enterprise content management for more than 25 years now. We also do business intelligence, cloud, social collaboration. Um, we were founded in 1995. This is our head office that you see here. And we are about 280 plus employees, uh, steadily growing. And we have office in Germany. We also have an office in Romania and an office in US. And it's if me and you love to work with, is our slogan, and we would like to continue with that. So why Migration Center? <clears throat> well, Migration Center is 100% out of the box content on scripting is needed. More than 500 customers, thousands of projects worldwide, 16 plus years on the market, and you can choose about 220 different migration paths for multiple platforms. We can accomplish migration without any downtime, so you don't disturb your um, colleagues who is working uh, in the daily work. You can do transform, enrich, clean, and standardize metadata. And preserve the data integrity through auditable migrations process. So in that saying that, we have nine out of the top 10 pharmaceutical companies using Migration Center. Some of them more than 10 years now. We have a high secure, high volume data migration. We have global service presence and we have a quite flexible and similar pricing model. If you have a question about that, you can also reach out to me later on. What we do, we make complex migration projects predictable for our clients. Right. Um, yeah, this is Mike speaking. Hello, everyone from my side. So, yeah, you saw why migration center. Now you, uh, I tell you about uh, the technique or the technical details, basically how it's built up. So this is an overview and technical, more or less technical diagram. Um, yeah, first of all, we have uh, three component, components, which you can read on the right side. So there's, um, let's say, if we start in the middle, there's one central database. Um, which is really the central database to store any kind of metadata, um, extracted or scanned information from the source system, and also uh, configuration um, and transformation attribute mapping and everything. So this database really helps um, us or you and the tool to to keep control of everything. Also um, have a report and an audit audit kind of audit trail at the end of the day, so you always see when. Um, uh, what happened when and so on and by whom. Right, that's the database. Uh, and then we have the um, a client. So this is one or several clients, um, which is uh, the only tool you need or only access point you need to do the migration. So you configure everything like parameters, uh, metadata transformation, attribute mapping, uh, run, start, stop, pause. Everything is done with the client. And then we have the job server. And the job server is the, the grayish, uh, um, yeah, um, with its connectors in, in the in the picture. So you see on the light, uh, left hand side, you see the source connectors, and on the right hand side, you see the target connectors. So the job server is actually a Java virtual machine, um, 
code written in Java. It runs on Windows as a service or on Linux as a daemon. And then it in, includes um, the connectors and the connectors are responsible for getting data and information and content out from a source system and also um, into the migration center and also getting data from the migration center into the target system. So they are the only, let's say, connected points to the corresponding platforms. Yeah, you see a lot of uh, uh, connectors here and we are uh, growing, let's say. So we have a lot of um, uh, connectors from the big vendors like IBM, Microsoft, OpenText, um, Highland, uh, DXC. And also we have generic solutions like Amazon S3, FileShare, SQL databases, uh, XML, Excel, CSV. And down there we have custom system SDK, which means we are always keen on uh, adding new adapters to the system. So in case uh, one of our existing adapters or connectors doesn't work for you, or um, you have a platform where you don't have a connector for, um, and we need one, we can always build one. Um, yeah, very quite quite easy, let's say, uh, just connected to the migration center ecosystem. Right, on the right hand side, you see the target connectors, um, same here, we normally do support the scanning part and the import part to one for one platform for one vendor. Um, for Highland, we have a new connector, that's what we speak about today. Um, and this connector is our importer into the Highland on base platform. And um, we have some additional platform specific use cases. Um, so before we start with the um, live demo and how migration set works. So first of all, the classical one, the rollout of a new Highland on base environment. This way you can integrate and migrate documents from file shares and other third parties products into the repository initially. So you can fill up the on base with uh, your documents. If you have OnBase uh, already installed, you can use uh, Migration Center for platform consolidation. So um, if you have several source platforms um, to Highland OnBase, you can uh, consolidate them and make it more efficient. What you also can do is that you can use OnBase as an archiving system. So you can separate active from inactive content and you can start setting up rules how to archive um, inactive content and make sure that your OnBase is running well and freely from too much uh, documents, but being able to uh, archive the important information that might have to be pulled out later on for some reason, but um, you don't have to delete them, of course. By saying that, I give the word to Mike. Thank you. So, um, yeah, only some slides left before we show you the actual live demo where I migrate from Documentum um, to uh, Highland Onbase. Uh, some slides to get a better understanding about the migration center or like, let's say the, the advantages, the features. So one feature is definitely uh, compared to, for example, ETL tools. So simple ETL tools, which just do extract, transform and load. Um, like with a big bang or one time try and error approach. The, in, with, in the migration center, you can really build your own, what we call migration sets, right? So in short, it, short it, uh, mix, mix sets. So what it means is you scan, um, you can set up a scanner as you like with parameters with the query or um, yeah, as, as you like or need it. But you can also scan, uh, scan, with, scan the entire platform uh, basically with one scanner if you like. So that means, um, when you have scanned one million source objects, as an example, you can use any kind of uh, scanned information or attributes to classify and um, specify your migration set. The migration set is then a scope of uh, set with, with, with a scope of documents, and one set can, has, uh, can have individual transformation transformation rules and attribute mappings, um, if you like, and you can also do one uh, set after a set, right? So a set is really a smaller, um, a smaller scope of documents that you don't need to do one million in one batch. And that really helps you to classify and, and, and configure, let's say the migration in two waves into smaller units and, and then you can migrate step by step. So for the criteria, as I said, every, any attribute can be used. So you can do it by, for example, object types from Documentum or any other source system we have, you can also use uh, user owner or creation modification or other date times, dates, um, or by folder, or even you can com combine those. You, you may say, okay, every, for example, marketing um, document as an object type from the uh, department marketing, in, in this case makes sense. 
so you group those together and put them into one mix set. Or you may say, okay, we, we take financial and marketing uh, documents because maybe that's not um, as many, or they share individual transformation rules uh, or attribute mappings because they use the same object types, for example. You also can do that and just say, okay, combine department marketing and financial and build a migration set out of that. So with that, you're absolutely flexible, totally flexible to do, uh, to divide your migration, to divide the documents um, into smaller pieces. Um, that's for the control and also for your convenience. Um, uh, yeah, let's say very suitable and very, very good. And yeah, compared or beside, side uh, step by step, we also have, um, or set by set, and then we also have step by step. So that means more or less we, or the migration center product or tool or platform uh, supports you in the whole process from A to I, like from analyzing and extraction of the source system um, to the import and even beyond the import, um, if if there's any error case or something, the migration center will cover and, uh, and support you in the whole process, right? To speak. To, yeah, to speak in detail of, of those processes, let's go through them very quickly. Like one is analyze and extract, which means we connect with a scanner, what we call scanner to the platform. And then we run a scanner with a query or, or, or type like star. So select um, star from documents, let's say. So we collect all the documents. Then you have those documents and information metadata in the in the migration center and then you can start building up migration sets so you see okay we have for example formats uh, pdf word and excel and we have so many from financial and we have this many from uh, marketing or um, professional services um, so and then you go into the organized phase right so you build mix sets like let's say this is a, as this example is saying it so we have marketing sales um, maybe we have okay put all documents which haven't been modified um, the last five years uh, put that into in let's say archive mix it um, or put all PDFs into one mix set so as I said that's totally flexible so once you have one mix set you go um, ahead and then go to transform and map and also validate and correct because it's they are belong together more or less because you do those steps on one mix sets. So what does it mean? Um, transform and map is you create transformation rules or let the migration center create transformation rules for you. Uh, and that includes also an attribute mapping, right? For example, this documentum attribute name um, is mapped to that attribute um, name in on base, right? Or the document title is uh, mapped to the uh, Highland on base description attribute or whatever. So it's totally flexible and it, it depends on uh, what object types or content types you have uh, configured in Documentum or any other source system or in on base, right? So once you have created the transformation rules, you basically click some buttons like validate and this will now validate the newly transformed attributes against the target type object type definition. So that means in terms of length, minimum, maximum, in terms of mandatory attributes um, or repeating attributes or any other um, regular expression which you can set also in OnBase can be validated before you do the actual import, right? So that yeah saves you a lot of time because you don't need to try um, anything like uh, yeah, create any mapping, then try. If it fails or if it does not suit you, you you need to roll back the whole uh, try and then try again. So in migration center, you really can make sure that the, the attribute values, the new attribute values will fit into the target system. So if that's not the case, you just go to the correct phase. So basically you click a button, reset my transformation rules, and then you change some rules and you click again, transform. Um, so in that, yeah, circle, you basically play in, in brackets around until you have your desired and validated attributes for the documents in one mix set. So once that is the case, so the documents have been validated in Migration Center, um, you go um, and set up an importer and click the import button and the Migration Center will then uh, import the documents in a transactional way. So that means for each object, it will create the object, assign the metadata and also um, upload the content of the object. And if anything in that uh, transaction fails, the Migration Center will 
uh, mark that object as an error, will roll back any made changes if there were any, and then you have that object marked as an error. But then the migration center will go on for the next objects um, and will import all the objects object by object. So that means when you, let's say we have, uh, to make it easy, 100 objects and we import it uh, like 80%, like 80 objects, and maybe 20%, 20 objects were uh, faulty or you know uh, mi missing any attribute or some attribute or any other problem actually, any error would be, be caught here. So that means the 80% can stay in the, um, on base and only the 20 documents have uh, yeah must be handled again let's say you do some error handling or you change something in on base or maybe you know it was uh, the network was down or something so once you uh, figured out what it was and and did the error handling you just rerun the import the same import with the same documents again and then migration center will subsequently uh, yeah, import all the objects until you have um, a status of 100% imported objects. And that really gives you control and, and an overview of the whole process, right? You see always in migration center, you see, okay, which mix set has been migrated or which which migration set is next or how many errors and, and so on and so on. So you have the full overview and full control at any time. You can also stop or pause any, any job at a given time if you need that, for example, the I don't know, the impact to the target system is maybe too high because migration center is also very scalable and we can really reach high performance, high, high upload rates. Um, so maybe the system is under, under pressure, let's say. So you could also always do manually uh, a stop here and the migration center will not, let's say, forget um, the previous made progress. Uh, you can then uh, resume the job at a later time um, and Migration Center knows exactly where it has stopped and will not process any object twice. So, yeah, that really helps you for the whole process um, technically in a migration to bring a document from A or from one platform to the other platform um, and it helps you from the start to the end or, yeah. Right, and with Highland, um, we have, um, yeah, basically it is well known that Highland on base was, uh, there's a DIP um, um, processor, right? A document import processor in Highland. So that means you have a bunch of files in a file system. You can also add uh, CSV or XML files with metadata to it. And then you start the process, you configure the process in Highland and the configuration tool, and then you start the DIP process, right? And that's still a, a really useful tool. It's a board tool basically um, in Highland, and you can use it to initially fill your uh, repository, or if you have a really large migration or large uh, amount of documents, you can use it still. Um, but it's not a direct connection. So migra um, if you use that, you will, will not have like a very clear and a good overview and you will not have those errors if there are any or information afterwards in um, in the database, like when you have a direct connector with Migration Center, right? So Migration Center still, or we still support that pass and sometimes it is, uh, it's really making sense. So we, we uh, offer or recommend that, um, that pass, let's say, to on base, and also the migration center here is very helpful because we can still collect from all our source connectors or even with database or other connectors the information into migration center, and then with our file system importer, um, which also can generate these VO XML files um, configurable, we can really um, like set up and prepare all the files in folders uh, on the file system. Right, so basically we can reorganize the scanned data from any kind of sources or from, from also from several source systems, like we merge it in Migration Center more or less and then prepare all the different file, share, file shares with uh, documents and folders. Um, so you can easily um, and more convenient maybe um, pick those files up in a process and then um, use the DIP uh, processor to, yeah, the DIP to, you know, um, import or ingest the documents from the file share which was prepared by the migration center. So that, that definitely is still an option and we, we recommend that in some, uh, as I said, in some um, yeah, circumstances. Um, but we also saw that we need a new connector and um, we were working on that new connector while we were like using that DIP uh, process um, with migration center. And the new dedicated importer 
um, is our latest connector in the migration center family. Um, it is directly connecting to OnBase through web services to the Unity API. So we can also use any any of our uh, source connectors to uh, scan the corresponding platforms, and then we use a direct connection or direct ingestion into Highland OnBase. And with that direct connection, we have these um, yeah let's say these features I was mentioning in the processes. So we then do a transactional import, and if there's any error, we call that catch that error in Migration Center and you can react on those. Also, you have a percentage, um, yeah, an overview about how many percentage or how many documents you have already um, successfully imported, for example, and you have later on an audit and uh, audit trail, what happened when, and like also about the attribute mapping, which, or how does, did the source metadata or source attributes um, looked like and how did we transform them for on base? So you always have that history about uh, documents and everything. And also a big advantage is definitely that you don't have a step in between, right? So um, as we know, with our experience from migration projects, it's always, um, let's say error prone at least, um, that you have a file share in between. I mean, it works. And if you have a, like have a good concept and good overview about that, you can manage it, of course, but it's definitely error prone and it is easier if you have a direct connection from A to, to B. Right, and now also the full process, right? You don't need to prepare anything or before you actually import, you just scan, uh, transform and import. So that's really um, the whole process and you can quickly react on changes. Also, if uh, in OnBase, for example, you, you see that um, you have to change something, for example, a content type or an attribute, which is, um, which needs another length or, or whatever, right? So that's just up object type um, definition. So with Migration Center, it's a streamlined or seamless direct connector. You can then simply, uh, I mean, quickly react on those changes and just change transformation rules and import the objects. Also, again, if you if you need that, so. Um, yeah, that's also, yeah, also the features. I'm, I, I know you can create versions with the dip, but um, with Migration Center, you can, let's say, easier create versions because when you scan a Documentum or a SharePoint or any other system which supports versions, you um, recollect or we scan the whole version tree um, and version information. And then we can also, with that connector, we can also uh, create those versions again in on base and that's really a, a yeah a, a feature limit from for the dip um, it doesn't work like that right so let's jump into a live demo where i will show you um, a small example of how you can do always that with a migration center so i will share my screen on our demo vm here right and what i want to do I want to scan something from Documentum. So let's say um, I will scan this folder here, customer project and just one folder just to, for example, purposes. So let me close the web top and open migration center. So this is the migration center where you have scanners, migration sets, importers, a jobs overview, um, and some other uh, um, features, but you mainly need scanners, migration sets, importers. So let's go and create, uh, let's say, use my previously created scanner. So I have a demo documentum scanner here. You see, I entered credentials, repository for documentum and document types, and then the folder here, customer projects and that folder. Also, you have to, um, to uh, mention uh, export location because the uh, content from a, uh, from the scanner or the content from the platform will be exported by the scanner onto that temporary file share, which should be a um, file share in the network, right? Okay, let's click on run. And on history, so we see it is scanning now and it should be about 160 objects. So when, when a scan or import is running, you can all, also always see the overview in per, uh, progress and percentage. And as I said, stop pause at any time, right? So now it's gone, so it's finished. So now we are in the analyze phase and we have scanned the objects. It took whatever one minute or 20 seconds. And now we can see 
the view scans objects. And this is a typical grid you see in Migration Center when you work with metadata. So here you see um, some documentum attributes, some Migration Center system attributes, and then, then all like information we have scanned from the system, in this case, all attributes from that object type, right? Okay, that, I mean, that differs from system to system, of course, and it can also differ because you use another query, um, or if you only want to have specific attributes, you can do that with the query, but you can also collect all information. Okay, now the documents are in Migration Center. We could theoretically now switch off Documentum because we have everything, we have the content and we have the metadata in Migration Center. So the next step is then uh, migration sets. And here I prepared um, that set. So preparing means basically documentum to, to choose a type. So documentum to Highland. In this case, of course, then I go to file scan selection, select my previously made scan and select the object into that mix set. And that's also the overview you have in um, within the migration project. So you always see the um, um, documents, total objects. You have now unprocessed um, objects here. And then we can transform them to apply transformation rules and attribute mapping. We can do the validation, which I have spoken about, and then we do import. And maybe we have some errors here. Okay, to, to, yeah, to create transformation rules, you open the transformation rules editor and the migration center already give you, gives you all the um, collected metadata as a simple rule. So in migration center, I won't go into detail um, in that, but in migration center, everything works with rules. So basically that means when you have one source attribute or uh, one target attribute, you can create rules to um, get, the, the, get your desired trans, uh, attribute value. Right, so in migration center, the transformation engine is fully flexible to, you know, uh, migrate from file share or SharePoint into on base or whatever. Right, so that in that way we must be flexible in here, and that's um, and that was a migration center. So, so is you so you can really create anything, any new attribute structure or metadata structure um, and attribute values as, as you need them. So that's fully um, flexible. So it's done with, with rules, as I said, so get value is an easy rule. And then we have more rules here to really manipulate your attribute values. You can merge attributes um, and so on and so on, right? But in this case, I just um, um, choose here to, to choose on-base document as a, as a target type. Uh, I have file formats, that's just a mapping list for using uh, the documentum format naming um, and, and map that to the on-base format naming, let's say. But nothing, uh, I did nothing more like that. So for the object type in on-base, I have a very simple one, which attributes one to five, right? And here in the association, you just say, okay, well, I use on-base document and now you can associate um, our scan data like custom ID to attribute to depart department to attribute three and, and object name to file name and so on and so on. But you can imagine um, you can really do anything you or everything you need in terms of attribute mapping and transformation and so on. So once you did that, the association, um, you can click on apply transformation and it will apply the transformation rules. And then the next step would be the validation which validates those uh, newly transformed attributes against the target type, object type dimension. So that's um, happened here, it's successful. And once you have validated data, you can go ahead and create an importer, which looks like uh, quite similar to the scanner. Um, an importer for OnBase is um, like that. So we have also credentials and you have the web server um, or web service URL which you need to use as a data source, right? And so let's assign that mix it to our importer and we um, click on run. Let's see if the OnBase system is up and running, right? This is the old client of OnBase. Um, it's empty now. And now I start the import, click on history and it's already starting to import documents. So let's wait for it to finish. Let's see in the jobs here, right? The job is gone, so it's finished. And you see I have 159 objects imported. So actually I wanted to um, 
put an error in here so you can see how I handle that error, right? But first of all, let's go into the client and let's see the documents. It's very simple here. Um, I have um, the yeah the columns or like let's say the object name. The auto naming is configured to show some attributes from our scan. We can open one scan or add one document as an example. Um, so it's in here now, it's a PDF, and we can also see the keywords, which I, uh, which we have associated. So as I said, we have file name and then attribute from uh, one to five. And that looks really good. So it's also quite fast, as you see. Um, like it took for uh, 160 objects, um, 20 or not, not even 20 seconds, and this is only our development system, so it's even faster in production. Okay, but let's go back. So we have one error, let's see if we can solve that error. And here's the overview again, and you see now 100, uh, 195 are here, imported successfully, but we have one error, right? And to see that error, you can go to the error list, and then, the, then you see the, um, the uh, error message here, and it says the uh, value length business service worldwide is um, longer as attribute three here, right? Okay, so, one way, or actually, let's keep in that error view. One way to solve that problem is by changing the transformation rules to check on the length of the attributes. And the other way is um, you can also do it manually. So I will do it manually now, let's say, just for the quick demonstration. So here's business services worldwide. I just go here, go to edit attributes and say, okay, all the others are uh, named business services. Maybe let's call it business world wide, if you like. Okay, I apply that one. So it's gone from the error list. It's um, been transformed again. So I apply the validation. And then I rerun the import with that mix set, which only have one document left. So it's running and it's finished. One document is finished. And now we go back to the to the list here, and now we have 100% um, of the objects in that mix set imported, right? So you know you have finished that one. Okay, so let's go to the open text again and see my newly uh, or my newly imported document, and it's changed to business worldwide here. Um, it was also successfully imported. So I, I know it was uh, I was very like quick, but we don't have much time, so I just showed you when an when an expert uh, user of migration center does the error handling so it's possible it, it's definitely possible to you know do the error handling um, very um, like in a concept and, and very quickly so you change transformation rules or sometimes you change your uh, a value manually and then you um, do migrate the whole mix set um, yeah, the hundred percent of the objects from that mix set from um, document to to on base. And as you see, that mix set is really helping you because now we have, for example, took that one hundred sixty objects, and the next you can just, for example, copy that migration set with all its rules and all its attribute mappings, and ju just then do the next one hundred sixty objects, for example. So in this case, you can really do it step by step until you have everything in your on base system. Okay, so uh, you have a possibility now to um, to do this uh, migration on your own, but um, we also provide our customer and partners with uh, professional migration services um, portfolio as well. So anything coming from analyst planning, proof of concept, coming up with the maintenance support, full service, quality assurance, installation configuration, and so on and so forth. So feel free to ask us if you if you're feeling that we should um, add someone to your team or if you would like to do it uh, totally, you can give the whole project to us and we take care of everything from A to Z. Okay, by saying that, I would like to give the word back to Mark. Yes, thank you both for the presentation and before we Head on to the last part of this webinar, the Q&A session. Let me quickly present our dedicated product website, which is migration-center.com. 
And on there, you find all the different product features Mike and Frederick just presented, um, success stories of former clients. We also have an overview about our service portfolio Frederick just mentioned, and we do offer our former webinars as webinar recordings, which can be viewed at any time you would like. And we also do offer a content migration block. And most importantly, you can request your personal free evaluation copy of Migration Center, which is just a simple trial version, full functionality over a 14-day time frame. That's our end slide for today. So um, thank you for attending. We hope to see you again soon in another of our webinars or through our contact form. And um, yeah, have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye. Thank you.